Hey, good Thursday morning, February 6th, just a little after 7 a.m. Eastern Time. Michael Clark here with BAM Weather. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel uh, for the latest and greatest on these updates as we continue to target our transition back to winter here. It's about three days away. We've got a very active pattern. We've been talking about this for a long time. Now, this shouldn't be really any news to you. It's, you pretty much should be knowing what's coming if you've been watching us nonetheless. So. We're going to get into a great analysis today. Make sure tag a friend, uh, share it on your socials, copy the link, send it to somebody, and uh, and share the love. Let's get right into the analysis. So we'll go over here, and I'll, I'll shrink my, my ugly mug here. You can see this is a look at radar this morning. We've got the first of, uh, gosh, what seems to be a half dozen storm systems the next you know 10 to 15 days. It's a storm about every three to four days right now. It's working off across portions of the north and east. Um, Heavy snow breaking out across, uh, you know, Connecticut and New York, Massachusetts, getting into Vermont and New Hampshire. Um, the warm air behind it has it transitioning to a freezing rain and then rain further to the south. Um, just a nasty, nasty look here. Snowfall forecast the next three days is going to include places in the northeast getting, you know, a two to four inch snow, some heavier snows off the lake there in New York of a foot or so over the next three days. The next system starts to get its act together coming out of the northern plains that's going to come through this weekend and that's going to offer up a swath of six to ten inches across minnesota wisconsin into portions of central michigan chicago might get in on the mix maybe even an inch of, uh, or so of snowfall over the next three days the ice forecast too does show the next system this is our internal forecast products here um, that could bring potentially more a coating of ice across northern illinois indiana ohio Another round of it here across portions of the north and east, and we're going to talk about that um, nonetheless in the, in the forecast update today. So let's take a look at the, the daily. That's uh, all through Clarity, by the way. You can find out more of it by going to BAMWX.com. Uh, but let's take a look here. Month to date, temperature departures started out very warm, very mild, as we you know, kind of thought we would end January and open February mild. Um, it's been really really warm with the exception of up in you know, the northeast and the extreme northern tier here it's also been dry um not we're only looking at five days here but nonetheless you can see it's been a relatively dry pattern for most of the country with the exception up here the extreme northwest and the far northern tier all right taking a look at the kind of current setup with the soil moisture drought indications um everybody's kind of dry right now you know we really need moisture um, and, and we're going to get a lot of it in the east and in the southeast, but I'm concerned. I'm concerned areas, you need to move this out of the way a little bit. I'm concerned areas may struggle a little bit to, to get uh, their, their fair share of, of, of moisture here uh, in the central U.S. And that's particularly what I'm, what I'm seeing uh, in, in the long range charts as we go forward. I'll, I'll show you kind of the, the forecast products here. These, this is from Polar WX, Tomerberg, um, polarwx.com. Great website. Really has a lot of neat, uh, neat tools and just a great display of weather models here. This is the next system I was just talking about that's going to bring that snow across the northern tier where it's going to be very cold, low pressure system develops. This is, a, this is Saturday, okay, into Sunday. Here it is. It's, it's almost an identical storm system. It's almost a repeat of the first one. And you can see heavy snow breaks out across the north and east. The warm air doesn't go as far north with this particular setup. Um, so you're still looking at heavy snow again from the Dakotas, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, up to the, to the northeast as that low pressure center goes off the coast. Now that storm departs, and then you get into the next one. It starts uh, as early as Monday night into Tuesday of next week. You can see a snow breaking out here. This is the latest GFS model in overnight. Uh, snow breaking out across the Ohio Valley. Uh, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, up to the north and east. It kind of runs west to east. And then the next system comes in Wednesday night into Thursday, the 13th, uh, potentially into the 14th. It's another system that brings more snow. All right. Uh, this is only out through seven days. Okay. Again, more snow into the northeast. These guys are in the kind of the jackpot there of snow. Then there's another system, hour 198 to 204, the 14th of February, getting close to Valentine's Day. We need to watch this one uh, for trends and risks uh, northwest back further in here, okay? Uh, obviously, in here, we know we're slam dunking snow in here. We're not, that's uh, no, no question there. But we need to watch this system 
uh, a little bit further to the north and west here. Uh, as traditionally these types of low pressure centers this far out, they want to trend a little northwest, a little stronger. Uh, I think we're looking at a potential big storm in here close to Valentine's Day. We need to watch that as well. There's a lot going on. Um, that storm moves out. You can already see out to day 10, this, the model's wanting to reload with potential storm systems here. Okay. Snowfall, this is just over the next 10 days. Um, if you see the first shade of purple, it's six inches. So anywhere where you see that first shade of purple or more, you're looking at six inches or more of snow. Um, you can obviously see there's many locations that are going to be dealing with that. Uh, again, uh, and then there's that swath that comes through with this first wave right through here. So just a lot going on. And again, if I had to, if I had to pinpoint an area that needs monitored for heavier snow risks, it's going to be in here. The models are going to have a difficult time kind of solving the phasing of these storm systems. So if I had to, to, to circle an area, it would be certainly in here, but nonetheless, strong signaling, a uh, strong signaling for uh, potential uh, multiple rounds of snow. All right. You look at the precipitation percent of normal maps here, uh, week one on the top left and the bottom left from the European and the GFS model. Again, you can see the above normal precip anomalies there. You're always going to have in cold patterns, you're going to have a lot of snow just, just to the north of this where you're, you're just in the green a little bit. All right. The darker greens are going to be where the warmer temperatures are, the heavier moisture and precip is. Week two, it continues. It's big signal here for big storms. So the models match up nicely. Multiple rounds, a lot of rain. But note the central plain dry signal on the week two maps on the right. That's what I'm concerned about there. That continuing. They're both actually very close to a temperatures. Week one on the left, European on the top, American on the bottom. And week two on the right. They both look almost identical. Okay. And uh, confidence is increasing with this. And this is a thing a lot of folks do this run to run model chasing where it's like, oh, it's warmer, it's colder, winter's over, winter's back on, we lost points, we gained points. Keep your attention into the upper levels of the atmosphere, into the stratosphere as well, and, and into the tropical forcing. The writing's on the wall with this, so kind of waffling back and forth makes you look a little silly. Um, stating claims like, oh, winter is over and the vortex is leaving and things. I've seen all kinds of stuff because... A lot of folks are just, they're just going by face value of the weather model, or is there blocking in the Pacific or not? That's, we've got to look at the low frequency background state of this entire setup and what it supports. And so these run to run model swings are just, they're somewhat kind of comical in the sense that we know what's going to happen. Um, by day, by day 15, the 10 to 15 day period here, European left, GFS right, uh, they're very identical. Uh, there's, there's really no no there's really no difference here. The European may be a little bit stronger with the tropospheric blocking uh, near Greenland and the and the, and the Arctic Circle, big negative Arctic oscillation and a negative PNA. Um, years that have setups like that where we have that negative Arc, uh, Arctic oscillation and and a negative uh, uh, PNA, we could only find two years. One was uh, 2021. All right. And then one was, um, uh oh, uh oh, we're going to get in trouble. One was 2021 and one was 1985. I'm going to show those to you right now. Uh, this particular one right here, pull this up, get this back on here for you. You guys are, you're not liking this screen, are you? There it is. There's 2021. And we're starting to see that the models uh, kind of go to this, especially in some of the operational runs. Uh, and then the other year that, that looked like this was 1985. Now, I know a lot of you remember in 2021, we had a big uh, Valentine's Day snowstorm. We had a, a lot of snow in February of 21. And then 1985, we looked like this. Uh, so nonetheless, um, regardless of, of, of anything, we're looking at the, the potential of six inches or more of snow uh, at 50% or higher across much of the, 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 about half of the country, really. Midwest into the Great Lakes and Northeast. And then uh, the potential for a foot or more of snow is maxed out in the Northeast. That's the Canadian ensemble on the top. The bottom is the European ensemble. And the Northeast is just maxed out 100% probability of a foot or more of snow. Um, it's just all out, all out pattern here calling for snow. Okay. Why is that? Well, the, the reason for that is I've got a bunch of different maps here. Um, 
And I didn't want to start there. I actually wanted to start here. So let's, I got these mixed up a little bit. Let's start here. This is the MJO, All right? Um, and we're looking at the statistical and the constructed analog uh, MJO forecasts. Uh, a lot of times when they veer like this, I've just noticed in, in years past, the pattern recognition tells me they're going to split down the middle. So I drew an arrow here. It matches the Europeans' MJO forecast pretty closely. No coincidence. Going into a, a, a high amplitude 7 and 8 slash 1 kind of hanging out. Um, so in a, in a La Nina in February to hang out in that, that pattern, you're going to have quite the setup. You're, you're going to have quite the nice uh, uh, look here in the maps, especially getting into phase eight. The phase eight February La Nina patterns, um, they, they deliver. They deliver well. And, and I don't have any reason to believe that we're not going to go there. That's a look just since 1990 of what that looks like. Looks a lot like my 16 to 30 day outlook, my weeks three and four I showed in my last video. Okay, so how, how, what's happening here? Well, the strong North Pacific block, and, and again, I've got a couple of maps here that I want to show before I, I illustrate this. Note back up here across the, early, back into January, where we had strong zonal uh, westerly wind burst. Uh, the North Pacific blocking really went poleward. Uh, saw a big uh, ridge in the North Pacific. Um, that, that particular type of pattern in the zonals looks to be kind of making a return, another westerly wind burst here uh, across the uh, east of the date line here. Uh, that's a that's a westerly zonal wind and that's that just what that tells me is a similar pattern is coming back um and you know then we go over here we look at velocity potential and we're looking at the the greens and blues in here and we're hanging out there until about the 23rd of february this is all mjo eight and one over here by the way okay go back to the top see where we hung out here Earlier in the month of January, where we got very cold and had a lot of snow, it's that same patterns coming back. Same patterns coming back. So, okay, if that pattern comes back, what's happening? Well, watch this. Watch the North Pacific in this. This is the 500 millibar heights. Watch where it starts. The trophosphere is in a nice big one piece, but then you have 500 millibar poleward heat fluxes going on and ridging going north into the into the higher latitudes, and you split the trophospheric polar vortex first. So what that means is this is around 20,000 feet. Now we have two lobes, actually almost three lobes, of the uh, tropospheric polar vortex from Atlantic blocking and Pacific blocking, okay? Uh, and what you see here is, is um, a split in that occurring. So we're going to have a tap of cold air. Anytime a storm system comes through, it's going to have the polar vortex there in the Great Lakes and the Hudson uh, Bay for tap to bring cold with the storm to mix in the snow, which is why we have such an enormous snow signal. But what's happening is, is this is kind of a classic bottom up um, split going on and uh, maybe even all the way to the, to the lower stratosphere. And a lot of times the problem is, is if, if you don't see a classic, you know, split at 10 millibars and the, the highest the, the levels of the stratosphere, you know, you're going to have folks saying, well, there's not a split. Well, it doesn't work that way especially in the bottom up. Not only do we split the lower level of the stratosphere, they're also very much disconnected. And so Arctic air is going everywhere. But watch where it goes at the end of the run here. This is at 30 millibars, just beneath the highest level. It splits it, it reorganizes, but the Pacific recovers, look at this, and it sends it all over North America. It sends it all over North America by day 15. I'm gonna let you watch it one more time. The source of the coldest air on the planet is sent on the other side of the, the hemisphere by the 21st of February into North America. I think around the 25th of February, we need to watch for a big old storm system, a big winter storm. Um, could be the biggest one. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be closer to the 25th of February. That's something that we need to keep an eye on for sure. But, you know, look at this. I mean, this is, this is by day 12 to 13 Euro op. You've got two areas of intense cold, very warm at the poles. You can see the split here. This is at the surface. These are surface temperature departures. The entire country is in the freezer, with the exception of Florida. That's very 2021-like, by the way. Very 2021-like. And the other core of the Arctic air on the other side here. Okay. So what do we have? Well, for those of you in the nat gas world, you're watching the videos. You're chasing these model runs back and forth. Stop that. 
we can help you with that, by the way. We have a service. You can inquire at BMWX.com. We send out reports, expert discussions every day. We don't chase model runs. We've never done it. And uh, we don't sit there and give you four or five different outcomes with 20 and 30% probabilities. We tell you the forecast. All right, that's what we do. And by the way, uh, this was the forecast. I'm going to pull it up here that I put out back on the 3rd of February, uh, where I, I, well, I literally talked about this. So we've, we've, we've had a net gain here of 30 some HDDs in the last two days. And this is what, this is what I put out, um, three days ago. All right. So, uh, and it looks a lot like the maps. So what's, what's it all saying? Well, 46 day uh, accumulation of temperatures here from the European weekly. Everybody's cold. You have intermittent shots of warmth there across the south ahead of storm systems. It keeps the pattern extremely active. Note the dry signal in the central U.S. I'm still concerned about. But look at the above normal signal here. All right. You cut this in half. Cut that in half. And you're going to get a lot of snow up in there. And that's what the model shows. That's the ensemble mean, you know, general idea. But that's crazy. That's just, it's, it's crazy the amount of snow it's put. I mean, it's putting, you know, 40 plus inches of snow in the northeast here. Um, and, and again, you've got to keep in mind, this area is at risk for having bigger storms in the Ohio Valley and transferring those storms off to the coast and, and seeing, uh, you know, bigger storms. So a lot to watch. Um, I want to watch around the fifth, uh, you know, the 11th and 12th, around the 15th, and a big one uh, around the 25th. Uh, that could be a big storm as well. So uh, polar vortex setting up shop. It's going to get cold. Stop freaking out over the run-to-run -run variability of the models. Um, they, they just, they're going to do that. Look at years like 21 and 85 for reference. Um, and share this with a friend. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you.